Okay, in our first video, we are going to start class out by going straight into a mile marker. So we're going to do a practice first. Um, you do not have to watch this part of the video if you want to give it a shot. At the end, I'll just show you the answers and you can check. And I guess if you get one wrong, you can always go back and check that. Um, you may have your flip book out. Uh, the idea is we're going to be using the back and then the different flips here for solving quadratics, whether it's factoring, square root method, or the quadratic formula. So the first thing is when, on the back of the flip book, is when you solve a quadratic, do you have one type of x or two types of x's? So I'm going to always start with the one type of x, which is the square root method, and I'm going to go through the problems and circle which problems just have one type of x. So that would be the first problem, just one type of x, and then number four that has one type of x. Okay? So, in one type of x, you go to the front if you don't remember, in the square root method, uh, if you flip it open, your job is x wants its own room. You're going to work backwards in the order of operations. Here they are. Don't forget with the exponent, use that square root, and that when you do square root, you get two numbers. Okay? So, if you remember, any time there's a parentheses, our answers are going to be two completely different answers. When there's not parentheses, then they're going to be the same answer, one's positive, one's negative. So what I'm going to do is draw my wall. I'm going to also put my order of operations backwards. And I'm going to first move any addition or subtraction. So I'm going to be moving this 5 first, not the 4, because the 4 is in the parentheses. So since they're adding 5, I'm going to subtract 5. And that gives me 25 over here. Uh, there is no multiplication or division to move over here, so I don't have to do that step. Now I'm going to get rid of the exponent, so un to undo that little 2, I'm going to square root and square root. And this side just leaves me with the x minus 4. And when I take the square root of 25, i got to remember there's a 5 and a negative 5. So now you have two problems to solve. You have x minus 4 with 5, and you have x minus 4 with negative 5. So when you add 4 to this problem, you get 9, and that's one of your answers. When you add 4 to negative 5, though, you actually get negative 1, so you get two totally different answers. So let's go to number 4, one type of x. You can write those order of operations backwards. Again, the first thing I'm going to move is the addition subtraction. They subtracted 50, so I'm going to add 50. Now, what I'm going to do is get rid of the multiplying or dividing, and a lot of us just want to go to that square root. You need to move the 2 first. So I'm going to divide by 2, and that's going to give me x squared with 25. And now you can get rid of that exponent and do that square root. And now when you take the square root of 25, you get 5, and you get negative 5, and then that's it. x is by itself, and those are your two answers. So in the other problems, these all have more than one type of x. So when there's more than one type of x, so two types of x's for us, um, you've got to make sure it's in standard form. These are, it's x squared, x a number, x squared, x a number, same with number 5. And I'm going to try to factor first. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to go to the quadratic formula. And that's the song, and I have it down here. So let's just see what works for factoring. So I'm going to make my x. I'm going to multiply across this way and get 12 x squared, let's see if this tilts down a little bit more, on top and negative 8x in the bottom. So you can use your factor page or the factor program. And factors of 12, they get me to negative 8x or negative 2x and negative 6x. So it does work. And this is where we're going to rewrite it. So instead of negative 8x, we're going to have this version of negative 8x. So I just rewrite this. So again, you still have x squared, you still have the negative 8x, it's just broken up in the 12. And once you do that, you're going to group the first two and the last two in their parentheses. And now you want to look what's the most you can take out of both of those, and that's an x. And then x times what gives you x squared is x. There's a subtraction sign, x times what gives you 2, that's 2. And if this is x minus 2, then this needs to be x minus 2. So what times x gives me this? That would be a negative 6. And then negative 6 and the minus 2 gives me the 12. And then my factors are the things on the outside, the x minus 6, 
the matching sets the other. And you're not done. Some of you stop here. You still need to ask yourself what's going to make that zero, what's going to make that zero, and those two answers are six and two. So let's go to the next one. Let's see if you can factor this one. So I'm going to make my x. And I get negative 15x squared and 4x. And when I look at factors of 15, here they are. Um, none of those are going to get me to 5, so we're going to have to do the quadratic formula. And it's here. Maybe you remember the song. you got to first figure out a, b, and c. So a is next to x squared, so it's 5. b is next to x, it's 4. And c is the plain number. You should look at that as a negative 3. And then you go for the song. x equals opposite b, so negative 4. Don't forget that plus or minus a big square root. Then you want to take b and square it, so 4 squared, 4 times 4, that's 16, minus 4, and then your a, and then your c, and it's all over 2a, so 2 times 5 is 10. So now you can go to your calculator, I'm going to move over here, and type everything that's underneath the square root in there. So you can do 16 minus 4 times 5 times negative 3. Don't do the square root, just do the numbers. So 16 minus 4, whoops, you can't see that, times 5 times negative 3. And you get 76. And then again, either with your factor program or the factor page, you want to see does 76 have any factors that are perfect? So, and they do, 4 and 19. So this is just the 76 right now. I'm going to break it into the 4 square root of 4 and square root of 19. And I'm just going to put my answer here. So I'm going to have negative 4 plus, so this is 2, square root of 19 over 10. So one answer is the plus, and the other one is the minus. And I do not need for you to type this into your calculator to see what the decimal is. You can actually just leave it like this today, okay? And then the last one, I'm going to see if it factors. So we'll get 3x squared and 4x, and factors of 3 that get me to 4 do exist. So I'm going to rewrite it, but instead of 4x looking like this, it's going to look like this. So just rewrite it, 3x squared, and our new version of 4x, and then the plus 1. And now that you have the four things, you can do the first two and the last two. And what's the most you can take out of this? So with these, you can take a 3 and an x out of both of them. So 3x times what gives you 3x squared, that's just an x. And 3x times what gives you 3x, that's a 1. So you need another x plus 1, because they always match. And so what times x is 1x, that's just a 1. And 1 times 1 is that 1. So now you got your two parentheses. Uh, what makes this one equal to 0? That's pretty easy to see, that's negative 1. But this one isn't, so maybe go off to the side. Set it equal to 0, subtract 1, and you're not done yet. x doesn't have its own room. You still need to divide by 3, and once you divide by 3, you get your other answer of negative 1 third. And that is the practice mile marker. So in a moment, you will be actually doing the official mile marker. Everyone will do it. Everyone has to take it three times. Before you do that, um, I do want to check this assignment real quick. This is the one that we um, did yesterday. It's on page 201. It's 9.4, practice one. We did the first one together, okay? Um, here's the second one. We had talked that A could be two-fourths. Maybe you have 0.5 or one-half. And then on the last one, I'm going to show a little bit more here, um, your A actually ends up being negative two. So just kind of, if you look through the math, um, I put the X and the Y in there. I did the opposite of H and K. This gives me negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, not negative 4. And then I subtracted the 7 over. That gave me the negative 8. Divide by 4, and A is negative 2. And once you get that, you can put it back in. So this should go in your notebooks, page 201. And in a moment, you will be getting the mile marker from the sub. When you're done with that, you will move on to video 2.